In this video, we'll explore Asana's latest features, including custom field rollups, assignable roles to templates, subtask rollups, updates to forms, and skim deprovisioning settings. If you're not already though, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and click both the like and notification buttons so you never miss a video. Let's get started by looking at the new subtask rollup features. So I'm really excited about this because this gives you the ability to roll up the estimated time for subtasks in the timeline view as well as the list view. And so if you've been following and using Asana for a while now, then you know how long we've been waiting for this update and Asana has finally delivered. Let's take a quick look. So within our very familiar web design process project, what I've done um, simply is created some subtasks off of this content creation space here. So quickly, what I want to show you, make you aware of is that now with the estimated time rollups, you no longer need to add in a, a value in the parent task. I have all of my subtasks assigned with estimated time. And notice as soon as I close up the toggle there, it summarizes all of that information. So you no longer have to guess what's going on. You no longer have to, you know, uh, put in workarounds for subtasks as Sana has finally updated our formulas in the back end there. And then similarly, if we go to the timeline, I'm going to navigate to that same um, content creation task here, we can see that there's one subtask here that currently has a due date, but you'll notice that there are unscheduled subtasks. So let's just go in and we can add some due dates to a couple more of these. Just like so, we'll come back to our timeline and you can see we can slip and slide these around um, just like we would the parent task as well. So now we finally have visibility on the subtasks. They're not missing, we're not hiding information or missing information within those subtasks. So very exciting update. And with this update, it makes me really excited for where Asana is actually going. And it's gonna tie into this next feature, which is the custom field roll up in the portfolios. So with this update, Asana has added an inline total of numeric custom fields within the portfolio list view making it easier for leaders, project managers to get a high level overview of key metrics without any additional calculations. And so again, an update like this makes me hopeful that formulas are nearly ready to be rolled out. When I did connect with the product team at Asana last year, they said that they were working on it actively. We don't have any timelines though, so I'm definitely not gonna be holding my breath because if we have to wait as long as we have for some task rollups, then we're gonna be here for quite some time. But let's take a look at the portfolio view. So let's get back up to our portfolio, very familiar creative production portfolio. Um, what we're gonna just take a quick look at is the custom fields. So I've added in total budget, again, as formulas become available, a lot of this will become more streamlined. So I'm just gonna add in a rollup. So you'll notice at this level now, we have a new tab called add rollup. And all of the custom fields for rollup are here based on the projects that we've added in. So I'm going to bring in our estimated time and you'll notice I cannot edit this because it's rolling up again all of the estimated time from our web design process demo project. And I'll also go in, add a second roll up and I'll call that actual time. So again, any actual time tracked with Asana's new time tracking feature, um, I've got a video on that. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, you'll see all that information rolled up in this view. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please go and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the new features. Have you used any of them yet? What are your thoughts? Would love to hear from you. The next update that I'm excited for is assign your roles at the template level. So what this allows you to do now is add specific roles to the template. And previously, if you if you recall, you would have to actually add an assignee into the, the placeholder. And so what that would do is you would have very defined people for each task within your project. And that's fine if you have a small team where no one ever changes seats, but oftentimes you'll see project managers changing roles. You'll see analysts changing roles. If a new person comes in or they're assuming a role that is not their title, then you want to have that flexibility. So let's take a look. If you're not already familiar with how to create templates from projects, you just click on this drop down within the project, go save as template and Asana will do its thing in the background. But of course, I've already done all of that for us. So if we go in, you'll now notice that we can edit our templates. And I've gone ahead and I've already put in some roles, but this new section here allows us to add any roles that we want to. And so we can edit a role. I'm gonna add just one more for copywriter. 
like so. And we've got four roles here, project manager, CSM, designer, and we can just as easily remove them from the template as well if we need to, or if we can make, if we need to make any changes. So now I wanna go a step further and I actually wanna edit the different roles. So you can see develop website concept. And so now instead of just assigning it to a person, we can use a project role. And so I'm gonna assign that to the project manager, copy, I'm gonna select all those three, and I'm gonna do the same thing, assign those to the copywriter. Um, UI design is gonna to go to our designer. And then any copy stuff, do we have any copy here? or any CSM rules, I should say technical setup. Let's just assume that we want to assign these to our CSM, even though it's probably not their job. Great, so now we can just click done. And now if we go new project, use from template, we can pull that in and you're gonna see that we can just add the different individuals in here that are taking on these specific roles for our project. And then, no, you wouldn't be doing two. There we go, we can go through our project and you're gonna see it's automatically gonna pull those folks in. So again, if you have changing roles within your, your teams, you can have the flexibility to still manage these really complex projects without having to commit to specific assignees. So the next feature that I wanna talk about is sections in forms. And so what this allows you to do is simply just group like questions in a more logical way. So this feature creates um, for the user a more user-friendly experience uh, for you, more intuitive forms. And this allows you to get better responses in your forms and more accurate data. So let's take a quick look at that. If we go to our web design process project again, let's take a quick look at our form that we've already got here. All right, and there we go. So we've got um, our name, our address, uh, email address. Um, there's a section there for us already. But if you notice, as I'm moving past each of these fields, we have the option to add a heading. So I'm gonna just go in there, new heading, and this can be whatever you want to. It just depends on the kind of information you're collecting. So one way to do it is to highlight in between the, the fields. Another way is to simply uh, scroll down on the right hand side and click add heading and so headings are really great because you can now create them and move them anywhere you want within your form just to just to kind of group again those like questions and so what would be nice is if we could get you know a description for this because sometimes as you're going through you want to have the flexibility to um, provide additional instructions let's say and so I'm sure that will be coming uh, really, really soon. But for now, you just have the option to add that heading right in there. The last update that I want to talk about is skim deprovisioning settings. And so this is for all of you super admins and IT managers out there. And this update allows you to assign a specific super admin to be the project owner of any deprovisioned users open and previously completed tasks. And so this makes it really easy if you are syncing to the Active Directory. It makes that process easier, uh, knowing that specific owners can be assigned within your admin console. So if you're not familiar with the admin console already, you're going to click on your profile up here and open up the admin console like so. And so you want to go down to Security and then scroll down to Skim Related Settings and click on Member Removal Settings. And so now you can choose all super admins or you can choose a specific super admin and include those completed tasks within the project it's that easy so previously if you were not connected to the active directory you would have to do this all manually when you're removing someone from the organization but now it can be done all for you and so that wraps up on asana's new features for march and april 2023 do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on the latest software features and tips for maximizing productivity and if you have a question leave me a comment i would love to hear from you thanks as always for watching i'll see you in the next video